Good morning. Good morning. Welcome everyone on this soggy Sunday morning. We are so glad that you are with us and we welcome those who are joining us online. Um, we know you're not live time, but we are glad that sometime this week or this month um, that you were able to, to join us in worship. A year ago, around this time, my father was in ICU, and I don't remember when you got off, and I mean, you were there for a long time. You know, it all kind of runs together. And I was kind of resigned to the fact that, you know, even if he got out of the hospital and got home, that his health was never going to be able to allow him to come here. And in all that time, um, through the ups and downs of, of the journey, uh, he made it here. My parents are with us today, Bob and Caroline Hershke. Welcome. Uh, and they are often, they don't worship with me very often, only a handful of times in the 19 years that I've been in ministry, because, you know, they are kind of busy in their own church. And they don't like to miss out on their own church stuff. So often when they come to see me, they leave. Um, uh, their job is they put the numbers on their, their worship board, and they did that earlier this week so, so that they could be here. So well done, good and faithful servants. <laughs> um, I have a couple other announcements that we need to be made aware of to us. Um, you all know that we've got a confirmation class. There's five of us in the class, and we are using a curriculum through Oxford Fortress called Collaborative, and it involves um, watching videos, um, a couple of video segments. And our congregation, believe it or not, does not have a TV, DVR. Uh, we've got computer screens, <laughs> um, but we don't have a TV and a DVR. We have been graciously uh, borrowing from my husband's church, who does happen to have a spare, but they really do want their TV back. And the DVR he's using for a Bible study at his church, and it just moves back and forth. So before we um, go out and try and make a purchase of a TV and DVR, we wanted to see if there were anyone who just happened to have a spare one lying around um, that we could use, or would you be willing to donate to the church? So um, we're putting that out there. We'll wait a couple of weeks. If we don't hear anything, I'm going to do some researching um, and see we'll have some memorial monies that we can use to, to purchase, because it's not going to hurt for us to, to have one. There's many a times, I mean, we could do um, movie nights and, and stuff like that, or, you know, everything's electronic, too. You could always, you know, I dream of having a projector that you can, um, but one step at a time, uh, having a TV with the DVR, um, whether it's connected or come separate. Um, so please share the, the word, pass it around, and see what, what comes up. Uh, next Sunday is Reformation Sunday. Wear red if you want to, um, to celebrate our, the church is always reforming. And um, it is also the fifth Sunday of the month and will be the first time that we utilize our hymn suggestions that you guys have been faithfully putting in there. So today too you can choose, so you can practice all week. We're not gonna give him the, you know, name this tune and then we give him six sharps, you know. Um, so um, we'll have some time during worship. It's not it's not going to replace the sermon, but we're gonna just have extra singing um, and sharing some of our, our good and favorite old faithful hymns. Um, so I'm excited about that. Um, so if you have them, continue to put down your requests and we'll try to utilize them on our fifth Sundays. We also have um, some prayer requests that have been added to our, our prayer list. Um, 
Tori Johnson has been added to our prayer list. She is a, one of my daughter's good friends, one of her best friends at school. Um, Tori has been having severe pain. Um, uh, she, a couple years ago, she had um, a back injury, and um, they were thinking it might have been. In the MRI showed that she has severe spinal stenosis. They said her spine looks like a 90-year-old, and she's 20. And she's been in so much pain, and she's got a long road ahead of her um, to the point where she has dropped out of school so she can focus on um, her options. Um, so Tori Johnson is who we are praying for. You all know Ron and Joan Shield. Ron had hip surgery, this, I think it was this week, and he is doing well, but could appreciate our prayers for um, recovery. It does take time, um, and I know those surgeries are always worth it, but you know, those first couple weeks are torture. <laughs> and so, um, Please keep Ron in your prayers. And we have been praying for Sharon Link's niece, Angela, Angela King. And um, she has been admitted to St. Francis, um, dealing with just a lot of health issues that they're trying to figure out. So she's, um, I just wanted you to, to know and to continue to pray. Pray for her as her condition has gotten more serious. Are there any other community announcements or concerns we need to be made aware of at this time? If not, let us begin our worship this morning as we confess our need for God. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity. One God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to do for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All sin and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Amen.
God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us read Psalm 126 responsibly. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then, the, then were we like those who dream. The head was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we have and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Nile. Those who sowed with tears and will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the sea, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 7, verses 23 to 28. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from confronting from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for uh, he is able for all time to save those who will approach God through him, since he is all, since he always lives to make an intersection for them. For it was fitting that we should have such high, a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first, first for his own sins and, the, and for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those are, who are subject to weakness, but the Lord of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has made perfect forever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Tired, 
they cry. They are not shy about asking for what they want. When you get older, would it be okay if you did that? If you were hungry, Jake, would you go to your room? <laughs> no. <laughs> what do you do when you get older? Trace. I uh, probably don't need to ask them to come just go to the pantry. Yeah, you use your words because you have words and you can use those. You can ask for things. Well, our Bible story today is about a man, man named Bartimaeus. And they were in Jericho. And Bartimaeus was blind. And he started yelling, Jesus, Jesus, help me, help me. And the people around said, be quiet, be quiet. And he kept saying, Jesus, son of God, help me. And the people kept saying, be quiet, be quiet. Your father and him. Jesus said, no, let him come here. And he said to him, what do you want? And he said, I want to be able to see. And Jesus said, your faith has made you well. And he was able to see. God knows what our needs are, and he wants us to ask for what we need. Let us always remember we can pray. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for knowing our needs, and thank you for giving us the ability to pray. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Amen. I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to this, but this is our fourth week in a row in the 10th cha chapter of Mark. And when we listen to our scriptures, sometimes it's hard for us to remember fully what happened the week before or the week before that. Um, especially if you were out of town and you didn't quite make it or, you know, if you asked me on Wednesday, Pastor, what did you preach about last Sunday? I'm just like, it, it might take a while or I might have to go look it up because out of sight, out of mind, you know, I'm, I've moved on. <laughs> um, but especially when we look at the Gospel of Mark and we understand that when the Gospel was first read to its hearers, it wasn't split up into sections. It was read in one full city. And so we know the order of stories. We, uh, we would be able to place the sequence of events. So I thought it might be nice for us just to remember and to recap what has been going on at this time. On October 3rd, we have early in the 10th chapter of Mark, Jesus is teaching about divorce. Pastor Colette was here, she talked about it, um, and the welcoming of children, they were kind of combined, kind of softened the blow when you talk about something as taboo as divorce, and then, oh, and then we welcome children. <laughs> but it teaches us, you know, um, it, it's making a point about what the kingdom of God looks like and what's expected in the kingdom of God. Then in October, October 10th, we had the conversation with the rich man, and the rich man coming to Jesus and saying, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And, and Jesus says, well, what does it tell you in, in the scriptures? And the guy says, oh, you know, honor your father and mother, you know, love, you know, I've been doing all this since I was born. And Jesus says, awesome, now just go sell all your possessions and then come and follow me. And the guy walks away um, sadly because he had many possessions. And then Jesus talked to us about wealth. Not that wealth is evil, but that um, how hard it is for people who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. Um, more so because where is your trust? Where, is, where are you dependent on? And so often when we have wealth, 
we put our trust in that rather than trusting in God. And so it can be very challenging in experiencing God's kingdom. Last week, we had the request of James and John to sit in places of honor. And Jesus talked about those who are greatest in the kingdom must be a servant. Jesus is all about flipping the switch, turning things upside down, the way we think the world should be. Who has the honor? Who has the respect? Who has, um, who has looked favorably upon the world and in the world? You know, certainly if you have money, you must be blessed by God. And that means if you don't have money or if bad things are happening to you, well, certainly, you know, it must be karma. Or, you know, you must have been doing something bad or, you know, or your ancestors or, or something. And, and even though that's not really necessarily something we believe, we still talk about, you know, if something good happens to us. Oh, we've been blessed. Um, and I always think, what about people who are struggling? You know, does that mean they're not blessed? Um, and so sometimes it, it helps us to think about our language and to think about how things may, may come across and how Jesus is constantly reversing um, the status quo and reversing the way we view the world and helping us understand that the kingdom of God is all about. Even his closest followers didn't fully get it and what they believed was places of honor and what honor and respect look like and who is included in that. Today, we have Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus fits the example of the, he fits the example of the least of these. He's poor, he's probably homeless, he's a beggar. What we do know of him is he probably had sighted at one time and he lost his vision because he says, Jesus, let me see again. And he is persistent. He is wanting his situation to change. And when he calls Jesus, he gets up and follows him. Now, we could have just left it at that, but we'd be missing out a detail, a detail that I never even considered or thought of as important. You know, I've been reading this stuff, you know, this Bartimaeus was part of Sunday school lessons as a kid, and I never made this connection, probably because I never connected that in the 10th chapter of Mark was the story of the rich man and the camel through the eye of the needle and Bartimaeus all right within the same page of the Bible. And there's a little detail that caught me this week, that aha moment. Why hadn't I paid attention to this before? Scripture tells us, when Jesus called Bartimaeus, bring him to me, come, let him come, Bartimaeus left behind his cloak and followed him. Such a little detail. But if you think about the importance and value of a cloak, it means everything. First of all, for Bartimaeus being poor, that cloak was probably his only possession. It kept him warm, it sheltered him, it could block the heat from the sun, it could shelter him when he's cold, it would lay out in front of him um, and collect the offerings, the donations that people would, would um, give him as he was begging. That cloak was everything. It was important to him. Cloaks were important. They were a sign of symbol, of, of status, of, of wealth, of belonging. We hear stories of, of cloaks, the, 
woman who was bleeding, reaching out and touching Jesus' cloak for healing. When Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem, people laid their cloaks down. The garment is a very important symbol of status and power. And Bartimaeus exemplifies discipleship by letting it go and following Jesus. Bartimaeus is an example of a radical disciple that casts away his only valuable belonging. He starts this text by sitting on the side of the road. And his text ends not only with him being healed, but with him following Jesus. He is the only one that is mentioned by name in the healing of blind stories that we have in Scripture. And it is assumed that Bartimaeus became a full-fledged disciple and followed and was probably present at the crucifixion and was part of the building of the early Christian church. When we focus on Bartimaeus and the faith that Bartimaeus had, it helps us to gain an insight that the focus in following and the importance of Bartimaeus wasn't so much on his physical condition of him being blind, but rather on his disposition, his character, his attitude, and his outlook. How can we model like Bartimaeus in our discipleship. When we're sitting on the side of the road, stuck, whether it's our blindness, our, uh, what is the word, uh, our, our blindness that might not be physical or literal, but um, our spiritual blindness. When we're stuck and trapped in our own sin and on our brokenness and we cry out to Jesus for help. Jesus says to Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? That can be our own cry, our own plea to Jesus. How do we respond? If Jesus were to reach out to us and say, what do you want me to do for you? Are we able to leave our garment, to leave our security, to let go of those things that are holding us back? Our attitudes, our isms, our insecurities, our fear. Are we able to trust and reach out in faith? And like Bartimaeus, follow Jesus on the way. May we all have the courage to let go and follow Jesus on the journey. Amen.
belief in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Risen One, we give you thanks for congregations and ministries throughout the world that serve as centers of prayer and action. Empower missionaries, teachers, healers, evangelists, and all who are sent to share your song of joy. In our congregational prayers for this week, we pray especially for Steve and Yvonne Mullins. Strengthen them in their baptisms so they may continue the ministry you have called them to. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, we give you thanks for generous land that produces abundant harvests. Strengthen and protect all soils, from rooftop gardens to prairie farmlands to patio planters to fertile valleys, and bless all who lovingly tend them. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Ruling One, we give you thanks for leaders of nations who work to build up the common good. Strengthen efforts of reconciliation among all nations that peace extends in every direction. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Healing One, we give you thanks for all who labor for the health of others. Comfort and strengthen all who struggle with chronic pain. Send healing and relief to all who are sick, especially Betty, Dick, Myrna, Jeanette, Linda, Chuck, Ken, Carl, Doreen, Kim, Phil, Jack, Pete, Ryan, Angela, Tori, and Ron. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Providing one. We give you thanks for all who provide for others. Inspire generosity in your people so that we carry out the work of making disciples of all nations. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Living one. We give you thanks for the saints who have increased our faith. Give us courage to follow in hope until you gather us all around your table of abundance. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Confident that you hear us, O oh God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to find creative ways to share God's peace with those around you this morning. God's peace be with you, everyone. Our giving is an act of worship, and at this time we receive our offerings. I'm going to have Jayla and Trace be our ushers. They're going to just go down the middle. We don't need to worry about people on the side. We're a small enough group, but if Jayla and Trace could come forward to assist.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Please rise. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Before our blessing, are there any shout-outs and celebrations we'd like to share with the congregation? Birthdays, anniversaries? Ed and me had a birthday on the 23rd. Dave Rylander celebrates a birthday on the 24th. And Betty Dawson celebrates a birthday on the 28th. Awesome. And, um, be next Saturday, Myrna Johnson celebrates a birthday. Awesome. We'll make sure that we'll sing next Sunday to, to Myrna. Um, we'll get it in and send Merritt home. Please. Yes. <laughs> um, I want to shout out to um, Rova High School. They placed first in the Western. Um, marching band competition for their division. Um, fantastic job. So if you know anyone in the Rova band, you give them a high five. <laughs> their granddaughter. Jim yes. and yeah. yep. And Mom is Roseville placed third in their division. Um, they, it was the best show that they pulled all year. It was fantastic. Yes, Trace. Yes, Rova also helped the band. Um, there was a, the trailer that had all our instruments got two flat tires just past Roseville. Oh. And, um, and, um, and so they were able to grab the props that they needed, but there's all the percussion instruments for the pit. You know, the uh, Rova let us borrow their instruments oh for, for that. They, they shared. So we could do that. Yes. Um, but the show arrived like ten minutes before our show. So they they were able to. Yeah, it was a little chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> and having to to do all that. Um, so they, it was fantastic. So uh, anything else to celebrate? Receive your blessing then. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. 